another year and another round of the Manila International Auto Show. And this year is pretty big because not only are there new cars launched this year, there are also a couple of brand launches to go along with it. So this time around, we're gonna do things a little bit differently. So instead of showing you each and every car here, we're gonna show you some of our personal highlights from this year's show. Right, so we're gonna kick things off at the GAC booth with this, their latest baby, the M Cool. Now, when we first saw photos of it, we thought it was a subcompact crossover, but seeing it in the metal now, it's actually one size class bigger. It's actually a compact crossover, and it's sort of in the same size class as a CRV or a Forester or a RAV4, and a certain crossover from Ford that was also recently launched here. But we'll get to that a little bit later. So the M Cool looks well, pretty sharp and pretty angular. And some of you guys did mention that China has been killing it in the design department. And the M Cool is no exception to that. Now the interior of this is particularly noteworthy. If you don't like buttons at all in your interior, then you're gonna love it. If you prefer buttons over screens, you might not like it. But either way, the interior of this thing is an exercise in pure minimalism. And if you're curious about what powers this car, it is a 1.5 liter turbo engine with a little under 180 horsepower and over 260 Newton meters of torque. So it's pretty competitive when you think about it. And that extra torque and power should be more than enough to propel this thing pretty quickly. Prices, well, it's about 1.5 million for the entry level model and all the way to over 1.6 million for the top spec version. Now the next one is pretty big. It is actually a brand launch under the name of Jetour. Now Jetour is actually one of Cherry's new sub brands and they make a couple of models called the X70 Plus and the Dashing. What really caught our attention though is this curiously named Ice Cream EV. And as you can see, it's pretty adorable and really a walk around in this is probably gonna take less than 10 seconds because it's so tiny. But what you should really check out is the interior of this thing because it is simplicity at its finest. And really, if you don't need a huge SUV all the time and you drive in the city all the time, this is possibly the only car you'll ever need for in-town commutes. As for pricing, well, it is literally a hair under 700,000 pesos, 699,000 to be exact. Now on to Geely, and what Geely wants to happen here is to basically make crossovers for the bigger masses. And they wanna do that with this, their latest crossover, the GX3 Pro. Now it's a pretty tiny crossover. It's literally a hair over four meters. And the features, well, they're actually pretty okay. Under the hood, it's got a 1.5 liter engine with 102 horsepower and 140 Newton meters of torque. There are two variants, a manual and an automatic, the one we're standing right beside here. And yes, the automatic does come with a sunroof. And the ballpark figure they're looking for is about 700,000 to 800,000 pesos. Now, what about you guys? So how much do you think this should cost? Should it go over 800K, under 800K, or if you're lucky, maybe even under 700K? What do you guys think? Okay, so we've been covering a couple of China brands for the past couple of minutes, but let's go to something a little bit different. Well, not a little bit different, a whole lot different. This is the Hyundai Ioniq 6, and Hyundai's been on an EV offensive the past couple of years, and this is sort of a culmination of that. Hyundai would like to flex that they won the 2023 World Car of the Year. A couple of things you must know about this one. So it shares the same platform as the Kia EV6, but as you can see, it's wrapped in this Art Deco looking body. And when you see the inside, it's all about screens, all about minimalism. But what we like about this one is they kept in the buttons. So for those who prefer physical buttons over screens and pads everywhere, you're going to appreciate this fella. Now, Hyundai doesn't have the final Philippine spec for this one just yet, but Hyundai is looking to price this at a little over or a little under 4 million pesos. 
Now, when somebody mentions Subaru, some of the names that first come to mind are the WRX and the Forester. But let's not forget that they make other cars too. And they just launched another new one here at Mias. It's the updated Evoltis, or if you're watching this from outside of the Philippines, it's also known as the Ascent. So basically, it gets a new front fascia, new headlights, new grille, new bumper, and new wheel designs to go along with it. And also, you get updated eyesight technology, which also includes some sort of evasive steer assist. So if you need to avoid an accident, this car can help you out. And they also updated the radars for the eyesight camera so it can detect a greater scope and pedestrian, cyclist, and even in foul weather. You're looking at about 3,780,000 pesos for this one, or about 300,000 more than the previous pre-facelift model. 2023 is a pretty big year for Mitsubishi Motors Philippines because they just celebrated their 60th anniversary in the country. If anything, they're the longest running automaker in the country and they recently celebrated that by launching the limited edition expander cross 60th anniversary mmpc edition now i don't know if i got the order right but yeah it's the 60th anniversary edition but the car that really captures the celebration of mitsubishi's 60th would be this one now yes this is a box type lancer but this is no ordinary box type this is a Lancer GT and they weren't even common when they were new in the 80s and to see one restored and basically in gleaming condition it's a visual treat for everyone now here's a fun fact this is one of the earliest cars to come with disc brakes at the back now over to Peugeot and we are standing right beside this 2008 now yes the 2008 has been around since last year but um, this one's a little bit different if you're gonna notice, it says E right before 2008, and no, this does not mean it's a hybrid or a plug-in hybrid. This is a fully electric model, and it seems that Peugeot Philippines is pretty serious about bringing this in officially to the country. Now, will it sell? Well, that will depend on the pricing, and this isn't quite the full Philippine spec version yet, but we'll see in a couple of months or weeks for an update. Now you wouldn't think we'd wrap up this little video without looking at perhaps the most important launch of the show. And yes, we are talking about the second generation Ford Territory, or if you're from Australia, the third iteration of the Ford Territory. This is the Titanium X, the top of the line model, and there is also an entry level version. Now this one rides on 19 inch alloys and it's got a panoramic sunroof as well as Ford's suite of active safety systems like adaptive cruise control, automatic emergency braking, you know, the full shebang. Now, if you'll go to the Trend model, well, that has normal cruise control, but it's also pretty well equipped. It's got power seats already, and it's got a huge screen right in front of the driver because it houses both the instrument cluster and the infotainment screen. Power, well, it's a 1.5 liter turbo, about 177, 174 horsepower and about 260 newton meters of torque prices the entry level is about 1.3 million this is about 1.6 1.7 million but that's not the only thing ford showed here at mias and it was actually a pretty sneaky little preview which we'll show you next now of course if you didn't see already this is the all-new ranger raptor and ford just brought it in with no announcement it's a genuine shock that they even brought it here and as much as we want to give you a full 360 view of this car, well, we can't because they parked it like this. Anyway, as you can see, it's got chunkier fenders, it's got beefy AT tires, and of course, it's got rear disc brakes, the Fox shocks, the whole shebang. But what we don't know yet are two things, the pricing and the engine. Now, it's more likely we'll get the 2-liter bi-turbo, but fingers crossed, we get the 3-liter V6 twin-turbo petrol. And so those are our highlights for this year's Manila International Auto Show. Now, which among those do you want us to review first? Would it be the Fords? Would it be the ice cream? Or would it be something else? Now, let us know in the comment section below which one you'd like us to film next.